So you finally arrived, have you? It's time for the World Cup. Hello and welcome to a new video on the channel. My name is Craig, it's been a while, it's been a week since the last video. So I thought coming up today, we'll have something a bit different. Still related to my Unemployed to Legend save that I'm currently doing with Wigan Athletic. But today will be all about the World Cup 2022. As you can see on the screen, we are here to see who will be crowned the world champions in this video. For disclosure, I'm not in charge of any international team. We're literally just going to simulate our way through the World Cup, checking in on the team, checking on the nations that are actually in the World Cup, who qualified from the group stages, and who has made it to the final. Just looking to see any individual players who might be standing out throughout the whole tournament. As you can see on the screen, this is the year 2022, so the reigning champions, of course, are still France. But only eight nations have ever won the World Cup. Could we see a ninth nation be added to that list today? Or would it still be the same old guard from previously? Or even better, could the World Cup be coming home? England are in the World Cup, just as a little bit of a spoiler before we go through all the nations. But I can, to be honest with you, I can already imagine there's probably going to be the same set of teams that will be in the World Cup. So. Before we get started, we're just going to go through each of the nations and especially try and pick out any players who might be from Wigan as well, who will be in this World Cup. I already know of one or two, I think, but I don't think there's going to be any more than that. Right, so in Group A, we have Colombia, Jamaica, Norway, and of course the hosts themselves, Qatar, who it came up in a message on my inbox, so the only nation with players on their squad who are all domestic players so they all play in Qatar which kind of makes sense because I don't actually know any of their players to start with we just go into Qatar itself they're ranked joint 90th in the world just trying to have a look see any top players so by the looks of it all their top players play effectively in oh they're playing in Spain so they have top players, but and they said they're all domestic, but they all play in Spain. Or in France, in Ligue 2. Interesting. Nevertheless, uh, there's, by the looks of it, they could be rank outsiders, to be honest. It could be the equivalent of South Africa for them, where South Africa went out in the group stages. Anyway, they just couldn't compete against the top nations in the world. Colombia, we know all about, of course, the likes of James Rodriguez, who is, of course, one of their top players. Uh, Wilmar Barrios from Valencia and Louis Muriel from Shakhtar and of course Duvan Zapata who's at PSG has he always been at PSG no he, he's at Atalanta in real life so he made a move to PSG interesting it looks like Colombian players are on the up Norway we all know the best player in Norway Erling Haaland who's at PSG now <laughs> alright he just moved there this summer but it's no surprise. I mean, just look at his stats. It's ridiculous. His um, attributes as well. No surprise. Erling Haaland will be Norway's big hope for this tournament. Jamaica, a first appearance at the World Cup final since 1998. Top players are Leon Bailey, who is now at Bayern Leverkusen. He found himself a club. Troy Deeney's playing for them as well. Excellent stuff. He's finally been capped. Well done, man. Is he still at Watford? Yeah, he's at Watford. Scoring several goals as well in the championship. Damari Gray plays for them as well. He's now at Sassolo. There is one player on here actually who's he's not one of their top players, but we are going to be very familiar with him. How do I view the actual players? Here we go. Here's the squad. Darnell Johnson. He plays for Wigan currently. He is one of my better players, so it's very, very pleasing to see that he's going to be representing Jamaica at the World Cup. Hopefully we'll have a good tournament. 16 caps, he's had most of them since he's actually been with us, so he's hoping for a good tournament for him. But hopefully not a run to the final, <laughs> because I want him back in one piece. Right, so that's Group A, Colombia, Jamaica, Norway, Qatar. I'm not going to take too long with the groups here, I am kind of don't want this to drag on forever. Group B, Belgium, Egypt, Japan and Portugal. Is Cristiano Ronaldo still playing for them? Yes he is, he's still playing for... 
Portugal in this tournament. This will probably be his last World Cup anyway. Egypt, of course, Mo Salah. Mohamed Elneny is their best player for Leicester. Is Mo Salah not in? No way. There he, get, yeah, there he is. No way, hang on. That can't be the same one, surely. Sorry, I need to actually check this. Mo Salah. Yeah, is he not playing for Egypt anymore? He's not injured. Well, looks like he's not in the squad. So that's a turn up. Either he's, in, he's retired from international duty or he's just been full on replaced. Belgium, we already know half the Premier League is pretty much the Belgian squad. The likes of Kevin De Bruyne, Lukaku, who's now in Italy. Eden Hazard, actually, I'd be surprised if Eden Hazard is even in the squad. Group B, uh, sorry, Group C, Brazil, Germany. Oh, that's going to be a tasty match. 2014 revisited Ivory Coast and South Korea. Group D, Chile, England, Mexico, and Nigeria. I want to see who is the top players, or rather, what is the squad for the World Cup. Aaron Ramsdale. Seriously, Aaron Ramsdale. He's got seven caps. He's playing for Sheffield United. Well, well, well. Looks like Aaron Ramsdale is. Now a quality player. He was at Sheffield United for their youth ranks. Now he's gone back to them. Interesting. Obviously, Trent Alexander-Arnold, John Stones. No real surprises across that midfield. Mason Mount's now in the squad. Jack Grealish is starting, of course. This is not the same Reese James that's at Wigan, by the way. This is a this is Chelsea's player, I believe. Yeah, Chelsea. Chelsea's left back, effectively. Nick Pope is in. There's no Jordan Pick. Oh, Jordan Pickford is there. He's on the bench. Interesting. Aaron Ramsdale is number one now. Jordan Pickford got completely replaced. Well, that's going to be interesting to see how England do then. Of course, no World Cup since 1966 when we hosted it. So, can they end? What is it? 56 years of hurt. We shall see. We'll see if the World Cup's coming home. Group E: Argentina, Croatia. They were runners-up in the 2018 World Cup. New Zealand and Sweden. Of course, Argentina former winners themselves. Australia, Morocco, Spain, and Switzerland are in Group F. Spain former winners, of course, back in two thousand sorry, 2010, not 2008, 2010. Switzerland are just your perennial get through the group stage, go and get knocked out in the last 16 kind of team. Group G, Italy, four-time winners, Serbia, USA, and Uruguay. Serbia. We did a simulation for Euro 2020, which you hopefully will be able to sort of see floating around my head, I hope, or above my head somewhere in the corner of the screen. We did a simulation in another save for Serbia. They came out as the Euro 2020 slash 2021 winners. That's not in this save though, that was in a completely separate save. I don't know who the reigning European champions are. We'll probably come to that the next Euros in 2024 anyway. Uh, the USA and Uruguay, Uruguay two-time winners themselves. USA, they're very hit and miss when it comes to World Cups. That's going to be a very interesting group. And Group H, Denmark, the current world champions, France, Iran and Mali. Mali making their first appearance, I believe, in the World Cup. 37th in the world, one of their best players, I believe. Well, Khalifa Koulibaly, that's Avon Koulibaly, my apologies. These are all the groups, and to be honest with you, by the looks of it, the hardest groups, I'd say Group C is definitely a hard one, and probably I'm going to say Group G as well. Group G is probably the closest to a group of death. Two former winners in Italy and Uruguay, Serbia are a strong nation in their own right. They have the likes of Milinkovic, Savic, Milinkovic of course, Jovic, Tadic. These are very, very good quality players that, to be honest with you, I wouldn't want to go up against. I mean, I've just watched the streamer showdown this past weekend. Milinkovic Savage is, well, he's a savage going forward. We already know that. I could see Serbia being dark horses for the World Cup. Right, so we're going to get through the group stages. We're going to come back and we are going to see who progressed and who has performed. And more importantly, who has not performed. In fact, I'd say most importantly, did England make it through to the knockout rounds? So the group stages are now done. Let's go and see who made it through. So, Group A. Jamaica made it through. 
Oh, ho, ho, ho. I did not expect that to happen. Norway and Jamaica. Norway, I did expect to be fair, but I expected Colombia to just go through. But Jamaica seemed to have snuck through quite comfortably by the looks of it. That's a big goal difference, plus five. Qatar naturally bottom of the group with zero points. That's why. Jamaica five, Colombia one. That's ridiculous. I mean, Norway smacked up poor Qatar six nil. Jamaica smacked Qatar 4-1, yeah Qatar just got smacked around. I wonder if that's going to be the case when the World Cup actually gets there next year, with this video coming out actually in February 2021. So Norway and Jamaica go through, Colombia and Qatar bow out. In Group B, Portugal and Belgium, yeah that's about right. A Mohamed Salah Luss, Egypt finished bottom, or well, joint bottom with Japan, just one point each for both of them. Yeah, Portugal smacked up for Egypt. There's been some really dominant results here. Egypt did score a goal at least, and so did Japan. Interestingly, how, how did uh, Belgium get on against Portugal? Lost 4-0. So Belgium lost 4-0 to Portugal. Clean sweep for Portugal, just like Norway. Some really dominant results in these group stages. You can kind of see who the best teams, or who, rather who the best nations are in the group stage anyway. It's kind of resembling the Champions League. Brazil, Germany made it through to the last 16 as expected at the expense of Ivory Coast and South Korea. Brazil just about got past Ivory Coast. 4-3. Akpa Akpo. Is that the same guy who's at Barnet? No, it's a, it's, a, it's a different one. It might be his brother. Scouts who were quiet. Okay, never mind. So it could be his brother. There was an Akpa Akpo we had at Barnet in real life. Brazil 7-2 winners against South Korea, Brazil just dominated and they just saw off Germany 1-0, albeit it was against a 10-man Germany team. Brazil looking very dominant, Portugal looking dominant and Norway looking dominant, so that, a lot of that is Erling Haaland. Mexico and England also made it through, they drew against each other before they both won their final group games. 5-1 Mexico over Nigeria, 3-0 England over Chile. Mexico smacked up poor Chile 5-0 as well, and England smacked up Nigeria 3-0. Really big results, this is not the sort of thing you normally see in a World Cup group stage. Croatia and Argentina through from Group E at the expense of Sweden and New Zealand. Any big results here? Argentina beat New Zealand 4-1, other than that it was all one or two goal winning margins, but Argentina, yeah they lost against Croatia in their opening game. Argentina ended up coming back strong anyway. Good showing by the World Cup runners-up from last time. Spain and no shock, Switzerland, they make it through. I expect them to go out in the last 16. I'll be surprised if they make it any further. Morocco and Australia bow out. Australia just seems to be never have the luck of the draw when it comes to World Cups, unfortunately. Smacked up by, Mo uh, by Morocco 4-0. That's really, really bad. Morocco must have been feeling good after that. Spain beat Switzerland 3-0 with a Morata hat-trick. Hat Is this man still going? He's... 30 years old, he's at Juventus, well, he seems to be having a better time than he did at Chelsea, and then Switzerland smacked up for Ar Australia 5-1, not Argentina. Good grief, Australia just had a poor tournament. 15 goals shipped, 1 goal scored, that's horrendous, got smacked 6-0 by Spain. Morocco fared a bit better, but they lost 4-1 against Switzerland anyway, and 3-0 against Spain. Knockout rounds could be very, very interesting. Italy and of course Serbia made it through. The looks of it, it was a lot closer that one. USA just went out. Uruguay performed awfully. Serbia beat Italy. Yeah, I still say I think Serbia will be the dark horses for the World Cup. I won't be surprised if they actually won the whole thing. Uruguay drew against USA for their only points. They shipped seven goals in the whole tour, in the whole group stage, and then four one win for Italy and a four nil win for Italy against USA and Uruguay respectively. There's your big results of the group. And Group H, the World Champions France, clean sweep, my goodness. Three teams finished on two points. France just swept them aside. They were nothing. Oh my god. Mbappe scored five times against Mali. He then scored against Denmark only once. And he scored a hat-trick against Iran. What's that? Five, eight, he scored nine goals in three games. Oh my goodness. Elite attacking midfielder. That, that, that's an understatement. So if we just go 
to the main overview page so we can have a look at the second round and as well going through a few of the players stats you can already see Mbappe nine goals so yeah, he's the leading goal scorer by far he'll probably get the golden boot before all said and done second round will be Belgium versus Norway Jamaica versus Portugal Brazil versus England goodbye but goodbye England Germany versus Mexico Croatia versus Switzerland Argentina versus Spain Italy versus Denmark France versus Serbia does that mean yeah, we're already going to know who the quarterfinals could potentially be. I've just, but the tie of the second round has to be France versus Serbia and Brazil versus England. They're the two big ties for me in that one. The world champions versus the dark horses. I think if Serbia get past that, they're a good shout for the final. Who could face off in the quarterfinals? If Serbia do go through, they'd face Croatia or Switzerland. So whoever wins the France or Serbia ties got to be looking good for the semi-finals the same for Brazil England against Jamaica or Portugal could be looking good for the semi-finals well the finals are a bit far off anyway but I'm just going to make a prediction now I'm going to go an audacious final Norway versus Serbia could you imagine if I was right we're going to sim the knockout games and then we're going to come back for the final which I will bring to you live well I'm recording it now this video is coming out on Tuesday but I'm still going to bring you the final anyway. We are finally here. We are at the day of the World Cup final. 18th of December 2022. We will find out who the world champions will be. Before we get there though, I'm just going to quickly go through the different stages of the knockouts where obviously we'll see the progression of many of the nations. So as you can see on the screen here, Norway just about scraped past Belgium on penalties. Portugal just got by Jamaica 1-0, so Darnell Johnson was coming home. England amazingly scraped past Brazil on penalties, of all things. That shootout against Colombia four years previously working wonders for experience. Germany beat Mexico 1-0. Croatia lost to Switzerland 2-0, who somehow made it to a quarterfinal for the first time. Argentina just scraped past Spain on penalties. Italy beat Denmark 2-0. And France beat the dark horses Serbia 2-0. So, so much for the Serbian prediction getting to the final. Norway can still make it. Although it kind of depends who they got in the quarterfinals. Never mind, they, they bowed out. On penalties to Germany, well, England just beat Portugal 1 0. That's some good revenge at the quarterfinals. Uh, Switzerland lost to France 2 0, no surprises. And Italy got past Argentina 1 0. What we're noticing here with the knockouts, all the teams who were smacking up the smaller nations in the group stages, really, it was very, it's very, very close between them all in terms of results. I wonder if that would be the same for the final. And you can probably see from the semi-final results who exactly is in the final. England did indeed get to the semi-finals, but they just bowed out to France 2-1. And Germany lost 2-0 to Italy. So just to confirm the third leg playoff, third place playoff, England unfortunately finished fourth again for the second tournament in a row, losing to old enemies Germany. That, ladies and gentlemen leaves us with this match Italy versus France for the sake of time effectively I'm just going to be bringing you the actual key highlights so effectively any goals of course if there are no goals then that's going to make it a little bit tricky but you know what we shall see how it goes I'm hoping there'll be some goals but by the looks of it in knockout stages there wasn't too many but the teams lining up for the World Cup final Italy versus France it's the rematch of 20 no, of 2006, I've just realised. So the starting 11s, we'll go through them anyway. Donovan in goal with Papetti. In fact, actually, why have I got two Italy stats when I can see the Italy formation? Right, here we go. Donovan in goal, Spinazzola in, uh, at left back, Bastoni Mancini at centre back with Papetti at right back, Tonali, that's Sandro Tonali, defensive midfield, Castrovilli and Verratti in front of him. Chiesa and Politano on the wings with Immobile as the sole striker for France. Magnon, I don't even know who he is. Is he just completely replaced Hugo Lloris then? He plays for Leipzig. Plays for Lille in real life and then moved to Fulham inexplicably. And he's now the French number one by the looks of it. Hernandez at left back. Laporta who's finally... Yeah, he's finally in the French team. He's got 28 caps now. That seems to have happened in the last couple of years. 
Varane, Laporta and Varane at centre back with Kunde, of Kunde. Sorry if I don't know how to pronounce that name at right back. Kante in defensive midfield with Pogba and Talisa ahead of him. Lamar Dembele on the wings. Martial as the sole striker. No Mbappe. Interesting. Where is he? Oh, that's Italy. Why am I looking at Italy? Mbappe's on the bench. He's not fully fit. That's why he's good, but he's just tired. Both nations effectively going for 4 3 three formations. Let's just see how it works out for them. Immobile playing quite deep here. I wonder if it's going to be a more attacking Italy side. They're historically known for their defensive work, but I reckon it'll be a bit more attacking from then. It definitely is. Chiesa with the ball here. Just slots it in, and it's a good save by Magnon. Interestingly, this does answer my question from earlier, or rather at the start of the video. Are we going to see a new nation step up and become world champions for the first time? The answer is no, because both these nations won the World Cup before. Italy four times, France twice. And they are the reigning holders. So it could be back-to-back -back world champions for the first time since... Brazil? Yeah, I think Brazil in... 58 and 62. I think they were the last nation to do back to back World Cups. What a goal by. Oh, that's offside, Mancini. Offside. Offs he was offside from a free kick. That, that's annoying when that happens in football manager. You think the players are actually going to be a little bit more intelligent than that? But he is offside by a fair margin, to be fair. It's goalless at the break. Again, no surprise, the knockouts have been very, very close with each other. But who is going to step up and score what could be the winning goal in this next 45? France have made that change, Mbappe is on. Lamar is over, in, has moved into central midfield. There is Mbappe, he could be the difference maker. He scored over, I believe, 10 goals. If he hadn't before, he has now. Mbappe comes on and is immediately the difference maker. Quite honestly, and no surprise here, the best player in the world at this stage. And it shows, just picks the ball up deep, runs through it, runs through pretty much the heart of the Italian side. Nobody gets anywhere near him, he just thumps the ball into the top corner. 1-0 France, and they are on for back-to-back. -back. If there's going to be any more goals in this game, it would be very crucial. Italy must get it if they want to keep their World Cup dream alive. Barella, Tonali, he can shoot long. Be interesting to see if he's got a long shot in him. Oh, and it's been oh, it's a complete mix-up in the French back line, and Immobile has scored. I did say the next goal was crucial, and it is Italy with the equaliser. They were just lining up in the edge of the area for that, but then as soon as Barella got into the area, they were lining up on the goal line, the Italian strikers. But it was a complete mix-up between Magnon and Upamecano, and the French are going to be ruining the missed chances that they had earlier in the game. If it, is he still on the pitch? Yeah, Martial. I thought he was going to clean up there, but Emerson bringing the ball forward. Have Italy got a late winner in them? But instead, it's a turnover of the ball. France break again. Lamar, he's got Mbappe and Martial ahead of him. There is Hernandez. Mbappe waiting. Nobody's marking him. That's quite insane. Martial. Oh my gosh, that was lucky. Oh my. It ricocheted off a defender going in. And Lamar may have just picked up what could be the winner for France. Fernandez drives the ball in. Nobody marking Mbappe was incredible here. But Mbappe gets his assist and... Well, oh, it's Martial's goal. The ball ricocheted off an Italian defender and Martial just steered the ball in. The keeper got fooled. Surely Italy haven't got a response now. If they do, we're going to another 30 minutes. Possibly even still penalties for Petty, Barella. Oh, is that a penalty? Oh gosh, it's a 92nd minute penalty for Italy. Right. Wait, aren't we going to VAR? I mean, this should be a penalty, to be honest. Yeah, but it looked like he was just tripped. Barella taken down, and who's going to be stepping up? Immobile scores, and it's 2-2 in the 93rd minute. We're heading for extra time as it stands. I did not expect this. I mean, I expected it to be a close game, but I just thought France had sneaked enough to be able to seal the win and it is indeed extra time looking at the stats Italy have wow Italy should have won that hands down this is a more attacking minded 
Italian side and here they come again Politano he has scored and France are behind for the first time in this game incredible seeing the Italian fans enjoying that one the French looking on in despair as Italy go 3-2 up at the beginning of extra time still a bit of work to do still 27 minutes left unless France can find an equaliser we're gonna have five-time world champions in Italy. The current record is of course five World Cups, that is Brazil. So a win for Italy here and they will draw a level with them as the most successful nation, as the joint most successful nation in World Cup history, Fakir. Playing into Mbappe, I wonder if Mbappe has got any more tricks up his sleeve. Playing very deep at the moment but he has the speed and technical ability to break. Lamar into Martial, saved by Donnarumma, one of the best keepers in the world naturally is Donnarumma. Second half of extra time now. France have about 13 minutes to find an equaliser. Otherwise, it's all over. Their hopes of a back to back World Cup triumph go up in smoke. And Italy are the ones on the attack at the moment. Florenzi, Barella. Trying to find an opening, but Mbappe just dispossesses and breaks. There's nobody stopping him, not with that pace. A few players getting into the area now. Fakir just dispossessed. But Upamecano picks it up. Griezmann, Lemar. Plays it over to Kunde. There's a few lining up in the area now for France. Lamar, they can find a cross. And there is Mbappe, and there is your equaliser. It's all square again. A magnificent final. Italy 3, France 3. Incredible final here. Easily the more entertaining, well, easily the most entertaining final that we've seen in many a year. Mbappe coolly finishes. He has been the difference maker for this French side since coming on in the second half. The Italian defence looking very tired now. I wonder if that's going to cost them deeply going into these fast, uh, these last five minutes. Fakir, he's been very busy. Oh, that's a straight red for Pellegrini. Brings him down. It's looking terrible now for the Italians who are going to be hoping for penalties. We're into the 120th minute and Mbappe's just picked up the ball. It's not looking good for the Italians here. We could be onto a last minute winner and just cleared by Barella. Italy playing much more defensive now. The Italy of old, if you will. They're hoping for penalties. This goes to penalties. This is going to be a very drama-filled end. As if it hasn't been already for the World Cup final. But we've got one last chance in here. Gun uh, Kunde blocked by Emerson. But Fakir playing over to Mbappe Hernandez. And Mbappe is in and he has scored the winner in the 121st minute. Mbappe makes it 4-3 to France in the World Cup final incredible final I've said it before and I'll say it again he has been the difference for this French side since coming on in that second half of normal time and France have done back to back World Cup I wish the actual trophy looked like the World Cup but licensing and what have you we can't complain about that. We've just witnessed a classic World Cup final. Quite possibly, whisper it quietly, it might be the best World Cup final in history. Unbelievable. And Mbappe is your MVP. Easily the best player of the tournament in, from what I've seen. We'll have a look after and see if he did indeed win the Golden Boot. But I'll be surprised if he didn't. If anyone else actually came close, I would like to know who. But I believe that's what, 11, 12 goals for Mbappe in this tournament? And there's the cartwheel, Coley cartwheel. But what a triumph for France. Back to back World Cup winners. Mbappe with the perfect 10. And he only came on like the 60 or 65th, 68th minute, something like that. He bagged a hat trick. It was a hat trick by Mbappe. But what a turnaround for France. So just confirmation then Mbappe did indeed win the Golden Boot. 16 goals. The next highest was Mbolo of Switzerland with six and Immobile himself with six he scored one on a couple actually in the World Cup final but France indeed have gone back to back World Cup triumphs France the dominant force in world football but most importantly Kylian Mbappe is the dominant player in this universe we will return on Thursday with uh, Wigan Athletic for Unemployed to Legend as we get back underway with the league season. There will be a league, Premier League game but also an FA Cup game if we just confirm. There we go, there we are, away at Burnley and home against 
Hull. If you've enjoyed this video, remember to hit the like button down below and click subscribe for more Football Manager content. Thank you very much for watching. I will hope to see you all in the next video.